Ghouls are pretty spooky guys, and in Warcry we've got not one, but two factions of ghouls that you guys can play with. We've got the Royal Beast Flayers and we have the Flesh Eater Courts. So today that's what we're going to be looking at. We're going to be doing some list building for those two factions. We are going to check them out. Generally we're going to see what they can do on the board and how they can play. But before we get into that, if you like the content that I'm putting out and generally doing the things that I'm doing, you can become a channel member. All the buttons are down below. You can head over to my Patreon to check out what's going on over there you get exclusive contents and behind the scenes action or you can check out streamlabs if that's the way you want to go but yeah without further ado let's get going into the video right so we're going to start with royal beast flayers they were released in nightmare quest the idea behind them is that they are a fairly swarmy warband they're fairly fast everything has at least movement five on it which is very good they've got very good mobility abilities they have a couple of units that have inbuilt extra movement buffs for them so that really helps them get in and around pieces of treasure and objectives that kind of thing but that being said, they are fairly fragile. Your basic ghouls are going to be sitting there with only 8 wounds and toughness 3 to them. And some of your more damaging pieces aren't really that much that much tougher than your basic guys. So I feel like just by looking at the list, they could really do with some kind of hard hitting ally to plug that damage gap. And to kind of complement the numbers that they can already put on the board. Looking at the fighters of interest, I picked out here the Royal Flame Master and the Beast Flayer Baron. Of course, they are a bespoke warband, so they don't have an amazing amount of fighters in the first place. But I feel like these two are the ones you're really going to be building around. The Flame Master is your hero choice. He's got three attacks at strength four with a three five damage profile. So the damage profile isn't terrible. Three five is pretty good. But with only three attacks and only at strength four, you might find that he has a, bit, a little bit of a hard time when he comes up against some tougher fighters, maybe Stormcast, maybe fighters with Toughness 5, where he's basically stuck almost crit fishing for that 5 damage. What you can do with him is use your Divine Blessings, get him an extra attack in there. Suddenly he becomes a 4-4-3-5, which is a much bigger improvement. He only goes up to 200 points, which is not all that much to pay when you're thinking about the leader of your warband, so I think that's pretty good. His whole shtick and his whole gimmick is his ability Pack Tactics. Now, Pack Tactics is a triple, and the idea is you can pick a visible fighter to the Royal Flame Master. So that can be basically anywhere on the board as long as you can see them. And then what you're going to be doing is you're going to be allocating a number of damage to that fighter equal to twice the number of friendly fighters with the Beast Flayer's room mark within three inches. So the idea is if you have a bunch of ghouls, let's say you've got three ghouls within three inches of a fighter that you want to target with pack tactics, you can activate your Flame Master and you can do six points of damage. And it really adds up. I had a game recently where I was running Night Haunt. I had 10 wound fighters on the field. And what my opponent was doing was running in with the ghouls doing a little bit of damage in there. Generally, it's not going to be enough to kill an enemy fighter, but what you can then do is use pack tactics to finish things off. And I think a ranged four or maybe six damage is actually pretty good um, as a triple, especially if you can use it at the right time. So I really like the Flame Master. I think it's very useful. You're always going to bring one anyway. The second fighter that I wanted to point out is your Beast Flayer Baron. Beast Flayer Baron is 115 points. Its stats are fine. 3, 4, 2, 4 damage profile, so very average. It does have toughness 4 and 16 wounds. The 16 wounds, I feel, go a long way to keep it alive, along with that toughness 4. But the real reason that you are taking it is for its Sound the Hunt double. And Sound the Hunt is you pick a number of fighters equal to half the value of the ability. Those fighters have to be within 3 inches of your Beast Flayer Baron. And then what those fighters get to do is they get a free move up to the value of the ability. Any kind of movement ability is always very useful um, in Warcry, especially one that will move the full value of the ability and that activates multiple fighters. Uh, because what that really allows you to do is get extra action economy in there. Every two fighters you're able to move with this ability effectively means that you get almost one extra free activation, especially when you're going to be playing a lot of fighters anyway. It really helps you out activate your opponent get to places where you need to be and to be very economical with the remaining actions that you might have. 
Now, I said already that the faction itself is fairly squishy. It doesn't have an amazing amount of damage. So ideally, you'd want to bring in a fighter to kind of help you out there using the ally system. You've got fighters in faction like the Awful Hound, but I don't think the Awful Hound brings enough to the table. I think it's pretty expensive, mainly because it's paying a lot for that movement. So here what I've thought about is as an ally, you've got a few routes to go. And the route I quite like at the moment is the Wielder of the Blade. The Wielder of the Blade has been released very recently in the Headsman's Curse. So he will be a Bladeborn fighter that you can bring in. He is Nighthaunt, so he's going to have Fly. But what you can do if you're using Divine Blessings, you can pay your 25 points, make the Wielder of the Blade 200, and give him his extra attack. And with his extra attack, he becomes a 3-5-3-6 which is very strong for the points that you're paying, especially considering that he's going to have fly. He's got high movement of six anyway. He's got 20 wounds built in. So for 200 points, that's not terrible. It's just like any other one of the bespoke leaders. He brings a bunch of different abilities to the table, which I think are very interesting. To begin with, he's got the Swift Judgment double, which kind of ties into what I was saying about the Beast Flayer Baron. Swift Judgment allows you to make a bonus move action up to the value of the ability. You have to end your move closer to the nearest enemy fighter. But unlike some other movement abilities like this, it has no range requirements. So you can basically use it on turn one to get your free move to get those three attacks with the high damage profile in there. It also has a triple, which is kind of like a net called hold them still. If you're within one inch of your opponent, that opponent cannot make disengage actions. So they're kind of stuck there for the rest of the turn. And on top of that, what you're going to be doing is subtracting the value of the ability from your opponent's movement. So it's like a net, but not like a net. So you should be able to run in there Use hold them still, keep the thing that you're fighting pinned up against you, and force them to attack you for a couple of rounds. Finally, he has a resurrect. He's got the Nighthaunt Resurrect Spectral Summon. It allows you to bring back any one of your fighters. This has been affected by the FAQ that we had at the beginning of the year, so the fighter will no longer be able to do anything when he comes back. But it's very useful to use on turns two or turns three, where whichever fighter you bring back can then be used on turns three or four, depending on when you bring them back to the battlefield. Doing some list building for these guys, I quite like allying in Chosen of the King. Now we're going to talk about this a little bit later when we come on to Flesh Eater Quartz. Chosen of the King, it is a double that can be used by Crypt Haunters, and it reads, fighter can only use this ability if they're within six inches of a visible friendly fighter with the Flesh Eater Quartz faction room mark, and both the Hero and the Berserker room marks. We're talking about Abhorrent Ghoul Kings and Arc Regents in this case. Um, and then until the end of the fighter's activation, you add two to the attack's characteristic of melee attack actions made by this fighter. The Crypt Haunter itself gets uh, an additional two attacks. So he goes to 6, 4, 2, 5, which is extremely damaging. Um, it's on a 32 wound base, which I feel is very strong. And why are we using this? We can use our Beast Flayer Baron. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be having the Baron in the same deployment group as the Haunter and the Arc Regent. And then we can use the Baron's movement buff to push the Haunter and the Arc Regent into enemy fighters. And then we're going to use Chosen of the King as a double. And then suddenly we've got the Haunter and the Arc Regent, which can kind of bring their force to bear, hopefully from turn one instead of turn two when they would do normally. So I think that's pretty strong as a combo. It's not very dice intensive. So I think it's something that can be easily done and something that can be very versatile during your games. How are we supporting that? Well, we're going to be taking the Royal Flame Master. His damage is okay, so it's not terrible. Um, and we have several ghoul trackers, so we're going to run five of them. Because the Baron and Chosen of the King really revolve around your doubles, uh, that opens up your triples for other things. The Arc Regent, for example, he has a movement buff on a triple that he can use if he wants to boost the movement of other things. Or we can use the Flame Master and he can use his pack tactics, get a couple of ghouls in there, put some extra damage on. Overall, I think this is a pretty versatile list. It is nine fighters, so it's not exactly small, and it has a lot of damage concentration that you can put on the battlefield, hopefully from turn one, depending on how your deployment groups go. Moving on to Flesh Eater Quartz, 
Fleshy to cause them a bunch of things going for them. They're really typified that small guys boosted by big guys playstyle, and um, that's the kind of warband that you're going to be bringing. Your basic ghouls themselves, they are movement 5, which is very good. They only have 8 wounds and toughness 3, but they're 55 points. So you can take a lot of them, and that's really what you're able to do. You're kind of playing almost like soul like grave lords in that case where you have a lot of chaff and you've got a bunch of big dudes who's going to be doing the damage and going to be supporting your little guys we've already talked about chosen of the king those combos are very strong allowing you to put a lot of damage where you need to you get a number of high damage pieces from things like your vampires and from your vargulf and from your crypt haunters um, but something I do want to say, your movement 10 fighters, so your big ghouls with the wings, um, they're all very much overpriced for the damage potential. So what that kind of leads to is a faction that has a decent amount of good fighters, but a lot of excess stuff that you're basically never going to be bringing. So a lot of the combos and a lot of the fighters that you're going to be seeing will kind of be a bit samey across your lists. They don't have the depth that soul like Grave Lords do, for example, where just everything is good. So that's something to bear in mind when you're building your Flesh Eater Corpse lists, what the best fighters are and what you're going to be using them for. So, number of fighters of interest here. I'm going to start with the Vargulf Courtier. He is 285 points, so very expensive, but he has 35 wounds, which is great. He's got Fly, which is great. He's got Movement 8, which is also really good to get there. His damage profile is very good. He's got a triple Terrifying Frenzy, which has three to the attacks of a next melee attack action made by this fighter. What that allows you to do is use your move to get into combat, use Terrifying Frenzy, and attack with six attacks, and normally he's going to kill. Um, whatever it is he comes up against, which is very good. He's going to be wounding on threes most of the time. The Vargulf is one of probably, if not the most common fleshy to court ally that you'll see in death. Looking at the two vampires, you've got the Abhorrent Ghoul King and the Abhorrent Arc Regent, depending on what you want to go. Ghoul King is decent, Arc Regent is better. Uh, it just depends on how many points you have to spend. The Arc Regent itself, 4 4, 3 5 damage profile, which is very good. We got the movement 5 on there again. We got 25 wounds again, which is pretty good for 205 points, if you ask me. I mentioned already that he has a triple bringer of death where until the end of the battle round you're going to be adding half the value of this ability rounding up to the move characteristic of friendly fighters when they start move actions within six inches of this fighter. Six inches is a very long way and with a high enough bringer of death uh, your basic guys are movement five anyway so you can get potentially a lot of extra move out of your Arc Regent and out of your Ghoul King. Finally I wanted to show the Crypt Horror. It's got a 4424 damage profile which is fine it's 185 points though which makes it actually fairly cheap with those 28 wounds and the movement six the crypt horror is able to use chosen of the king so it can get those extra attacks in there which is very good if you wanted a bit more punch you can look at the crypt haunter it's a few more points it's got one extra point of crit on there and it's got a bunch of extra wounds but in reality the crypt horror is the more efficient of the two fighters it doesn't take up any hero slots so it frees up the ability for you to take allies. As a list here, this is basically a tournament winning list. It's got all the best stuff that we talked about. We've got the Vargulf, we got the Ghoul King, we got a pair of Crypt Horrors, which opens up Chosen of the King plays. The abilities themselves don't conflict with each other. Chosen of the King is on a double. Terrifying Frenzy of the Vargulf is on a triple. So it's not like it's very triple hungry where your fighters are going to be competing um, for those dice. Effectively, every turn, you should be able to make a triple. You should be able to make a double using your wild dice and whatever else it is that you roll. On top of that, it's got plenty of damage potential and it plays the objective game nicely with those extra ghouls. Now, it's not the biggest warband that you could bring. It's only seven guys. Um, it's also got no resurrection because we're not bringing in a Night Haunt hero. We are already using basically the most point sufficient fighters in the list. Um, but I kind of feel like to expand on this and maybe to make it a little bit better, um, what we would want is more of an ability to crack open those higher toughness targets. Uh, we've got a lot of 4424 damage profiles. Um, so even with Chosen of the King boosting those amount of attacks, 
you're still going to be wounding on fours or fives most of the time. So looking into that, how do we boost what we already have while still keeping the numbers kind of at a reasonable level. And I think that the Wielder of the Blade is where we can go here. We're going to be allying that in from Night Haunt. We talked about the Wielder of the Blade already. If you give it the Blessing of Ferocity for plus one attack, it's actually better than the base damage profile of the Vargulf. But the important thing is, is that it's 85 points cheaper than a Vargulf. It's still got Fly, just like the Vargulf does. It's a couple points slower, but it brings a whole bunch of interesting abilities to the table. It brings its kind of pseudo net ability. It brings its extra move double. It brings resurrection, which is very good. And it brings the basic night haunt double. Of course, it's not as survivable. So what are we going to do with those extra 85 points that we get? Um, I think that we can bless our crypt horrors with the blessing of brutality. Brutality is plus one base damage uh, on the attacks. So I think with a 4 4 3 4 damage profile, suddenly we're looking at doing a lot more damage, especially when we're going to be com combining that with Chosen of the King. And suddenly what you have in that case is four proper high damage fighters with a lot of mobility in there. Remember the Haunters are movement 6. The Wielder of the Blade is movement 6 with Fly. The Arc Regent is movement 5, but it's still got the damage going for it. So this is the kind of thing that I would play, and I think it's pretty good. Whether it's better or it's worse than the previous list, that kind of remains to be seen. But yeah, I think using the ally system and using Blessings, and you can really do some interesting things with Flesh Eater Quartz. I think just by having 55-point ghouls, it opens up the ability to bring in a lot of different allies and still have enough guys that you'd be able to run a, a solid functioning list. Right, that's it from me for today. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little look into the ghoul factions for Warcry. They are pretty fun to play, I think, from what I've seen. So yeah, I hope that's given you some ideas as to what you can do yourselves. As always, if you like what you see, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And let me know, let me know what you think about Royal Beast Flayers or Flesh Eater Quartz, if you've got some interesting builds that you want to share, or if you've been having some success with them recently, please let us put it down in the comment section below and we'll have a good chat about that. I'd like to give a shout out to my two latest Patreons, Eggywigs and Cornell. Thank you very much for supporting me. And yeah, as always, thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.